a GC uh, or electrical okay. chem. Yeah. Um, and every once in a while, a little bit of UV vis. Do you want to do it for like? Yeah. No. Uh, CV, like the probate, CV, DPVs. Um, I'm going to do a spectral control for the tree, which is take connected to UV vis and the electrical chem setup. And you're watching the UV as you change potentials. Ah. Oh, um, I done a I, I did a, a titration electrochem which gives you a forte which shows you the one you want because it shows you if your electron transfers work. You're not now. sending weapons to anyone. We just practice uh, security. But yeah, no, that's I do a lot of electrochem stuff, so when we get to that next uh, do you and you probably can speed it up by having two secret keys or even three. So it's still not quite secure because people who sit on the same row can easily identify it. But if you swap between the rows, there is a little intrigue. GC is nothing too special. Same as before. It's you're just taking a. Oh. <laughs> you're just taking yeah. some, some type of modules slash substrate. You don't know who uh, it is. Same. Same. And it's basically just following. Uh, right. Yeah. yeah. I, mean, no, I have reference of the no, was from the last time, but yeah, I, I, if I, I declare it, also a lot of my interest disappears. We use that to determine. Uh, Product use of our of our oxidation reactions. <laughs> I've done a GCMS a couple of times. I can't give you MS. She's not always. So it goes to JC and you can determine what it comes out and it goes into that answer. I don't know. I don't know. I have a I will collect and then redistribute in the like a piece of circle. Does that mean? They didn't mention before. Not done high res, but I watched the high res. I don't know. I was trying to do it myself. I guess it was a joke. Yeah, it's good. I remember all that. My lab bought a copy flash though. It's an automated uh, Are you able to get into the No, you need a copy. Because I asked for a roll, but I just thought that it was like a Oh, what do we do? Oh, Alan says it's your Okay, you said that they've done. Okay, it's cool. Yeah, no, he's talking to Carly, so I didn't have to know. Yeah, Carl thought that that was like a 700 number. Did you get to take that? You know, like an undergrad kid into a 600 number. Without a major reason, it would be hard, but like as a subject of bridges. And that's where I ended up. You could do like a subject of bridges. Yeah. Well, because I there aren't any physics classes getting offered, so I haven't participated. So, is Orm retired? 
Is he? I don't know. Well, there's like no optics, lasers, photonics, like none of this stuff Ooh. getting offered. But I don't know. Which would suck because I still have not taken the class from him. Yeah. Oh, but the uh, it's it's mathematical method physics overlap in the class. Yeah. And it's randomly on Thursday. No other labs have ever been on Tuesday or Thursday. Monday or Wednesday or Friday or Tuesday. There is a little chance that they will distribute. Yeah, and so there's no work immediately to the other. That's it. I think he's back. So, I get a substitution. Yeah, Tuesday. I get a substitution. Which lab is in the chemistry one? Yeah, okay. I know what the professor is doing. I'm going to get some nice things. I'm going to get some nice things. No. Not yeah. one of those <laughs> the ones with the end of the Better than mine was the last one. I just kind of like this. I didn't want to have a certain like real art. It's how you get to it. That's and the whole side of the two graphs you got. Really, a lot of them. <laughs> yeah. I'm just curious. Actually, I'm going to do that. Yeah. I'm going to get some of these books. 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 Which one was the hardest? I'm going to get some of these books. 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 I'm going to get some of these
the only things is that it is Gaussian, regular Gaussian with minus expansion, and here it is with plus. They are designed in such a way that you multiply, by multiplying these two functions by itself, you get one. And if you plug in the derivative of order n, this function will generate polynomials of higher and higher order, right? So if you apply po this uh, derivative zeros order, the polynomial will be zeros order, one. If you make the first, you get uh, linear. If you apply it twice, you get the uh, quadratic function, and then you, you continue for the, for the third one. And uh, what did you assign 25, right? Mm -hmm. So the answers for this f0, f1, f2, f3 should be polynomials of increasing orders. Uh, coefficient signs uh, forgive it to each other. It's so easy to make mistakes. Uh, I guess I'm just confused. It looks yes. like you didn't add the ex squared over 2 after you took the derivative. Just, just a second. I'll bring it to the larger so that we have specific discussion. OK. Please repeat. So you took the derivative to the nth power of, let's just go easy, and of like the first or zero when n equals zero, right? Yes. Okay, and you got one. Uh huh. Okay, I agree that's the derivative, but then wouldn't e x squared to over two still exist because you didn't take the derivative of that? So here, not you can go one up even. What I'm saying is that you're only taking the derivative of e negative x squared over 2, right? But if the derivative of zero's order, mm -hmm. derivative of zero's order is no derivative. I agree. So then you didn't take the derivative at all of e x squared over 2, right? Correct. So then wouldn't the answer be e x squared over 2? No. There is a product. Um, so derivative of uh, zero's order is 1. Mm -hmm. This way, uh, you use the Changes nothing. So you have product of e to <coughs> this power and e to the negative of this power. And they will compensate each other. Okay. Make sense? I guess. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. I guess that makes sense. And uh, the reason for this equation, we, we will never use it later. It is only to uh, get a mindset that there are several bypasses. The traditional way that I keep in secret from you, well, you can read uh, Wikipedia and, and textbooks, uh, the expansion of eigenstates of, uh, in as a series, as power as uh, polynomials. It's very painful and not pleasant. But there are several bypasses. One is with creation and inhibition operators that we already committed. And another one is Rodriguez uh, formula. If uh, one plugs in right constants here, operation like this, you generate all eigenstates of harmonic oscillator. It's just a math trick. <coughs> So here, number three, worth of 25. Here, again, we make our life a little simpler by avoiding the constants, which make our life painful. But could be a little alpha here if you would like to be rigorous. And please give me signs if I'm too slow, if you are if you went much further in grading, give me like secret signs. If no, I will keep it at my place. And then these two operations are very similar in nature to what we did with creation and annihilation operators, right? So linear combination of position and uh, momentum with different signs. And if <coughs> you use minus sign in this linear combination. Then they're um, popping up 
terms of second power that add together, and you get the polynomial of, of second power as a uh, multiplied by Gaussian. And this is an analog of applying creation operator to first excited state. You can recognize similarities. Sim So the power of polynomial escalates, goes up. If you put plus sign here, then the second powers pop up with different signs, cancel, and you go down to polynomial of lower order. <laughs> so this corresponds to annihilation from first excited to ground state. Here it was. Number two. Just give liberal credit. The number four. <coughs> Inspect combination of such products. Uh, of a product of uh, two operators. One is one, and first and second are linear combinations of position and momentum. So if you do this exercise, you see it's uh, simple. You just open brackets, recall that uh, operators cannot be swapped randomly, and two middle terms will uh, correspond to commutation and give a constant, right? And uh, first and last term gives position squared and uh, momentum squared. Something is not perfect with constants. We do not put, put mass, frequency, uh, sign is wrong, but in functional form, first term is like potential energy, like, uh, potential uh, harmonic potential, Second term is like kinetic energy, second derivative over position, and the third term is just a constant. So if you see something similar to this, give full credit, or even if you do not see, but see some uh, attempt to analyze and give conclusions also, try to ramp with the credit. And the conclusions are that if you, if you take linear combinations of position and moment with different signs and make them product, which will be very soon a product of creation and annihilation operators. They will generate Hamiltonian of harmonic oscillator plus some constant. So product of creation times annihilation gives Hamiltonian. Yes? I guess I'm confused. You know, it's like kind of like the Hamiltonian, but it's differing by a non, or like two different factors up front. Yeah, it's not like directly proportional. It's like the position dependence is proportional to one thing and the momentum dependence is proportional to another thing. If you play with constants in this linear combinations, uh, you will get the right thing. So it, um, if, if you would work out the constants, if you make your homework, longer, my preparation longer, and your grading session longer. We just get the main idea. What? 25, right? 30. 30, yes. So it is more, mathematically not more complicated, but uh, it's more philosophically important. Okay, what else? <clears throat> um, for the question about examples of harmonic oscillators, okay, let me examine myself and try to design something. So, Just want to insert an empty page. 
some number. Right? So let me earn my credit. Um, vibrating atoms and molecules. Vibrations of uh, solvent around polar molecule. Oh, I, I can bet someone was putting ball and spring. Um, it's a little silly for this course, but plasmons. Induction capacity contour in uh, radio transmitter. Electric field in uh, lasers. Am I missing something? Other, uh, did you got in your own work or in the works that you're grading something? Uh, in addition to this, your favorite one is cell phones. Huh? Cell phones. Uh, it's. Uh... Oh, that's the. Uh... Okay, sorry. Okay. <coughs> uh... No? I didn't insert it. No, I did it here. And for extra credit, number six with uh, 40 points, V integrals 0 to and four are coming as uh, multiples of uh, square root of pi. So square root of three, square root of pi minus two square root of pi plus one square root of pi, which uh, adds to, to two. And uh, if you were working out it uh, thoroughly, uh, you may have tried to practice integration by parts. And I already know how the developments were going. And the best part, at least uh, when, when I was doing it for integral two, so this xi squared times Gaussian times d psi. And there is also factor xi squared over two. But in this integral, one can submerge this thing <coughs> under the sign of integral. Because if you integrate this um, linear times Gaussian as standalone integral, you can take it. Because psi times d psi is psi squared, and then, then it is, uh, can be taken analytically in the indefinite uh, limits. So if you if you do it, then you have integral psi d of psi square square minus psi square. And now I'm playing lazy and skipping the factors. There will be like minus uh, um, one over two. And then this var variable can be called u, and this v. And then you uh, play integration by parts. So right answer full credit, right choice of uh, parts for integration by parts. Very liberal. 
how did you use integration by parts? Hmm? How did you use integration by parts? Because you can't do that with like x squared times e does something x squared. Or like psi squared or whatever. Uh, Angela, can you please move uh, the window to the lower You can take this in the draw, right? Yes. And if you know, know this integral, which will be like say squared times Gaussian. But that only happens if you have like x e to the Wait, wait, wait. Yeah. We, are, we are thinking in non-linear way. OK. Now, if you take derivative, derivative of, of such thing, you will come back to this expression. <clears throat> so instead of v variable, you can you can use this stuff, and then you practice u v minus v d. No, um, I'm very no. curious to see your solution. Uh, I did like a parametric integration thing. I guess I, I'm also confused as to how you got like m and omega and all that in there because that wasn't ever like in the function that we had. It is in definition of alpha. Therefore, the credit is, is big oh, because okay. it, it is uh, heavy mathematical effort. Yeah, I just want to e know even if uh, someone was fearless enough to start it and do not progress not much, give some credit to upload for, for the effort. Okay, uh, let me please try to add together as a little help, and then we will have maybe 15 minutes for the actual lecture. If anyone needs... Even if you do not like each other, do not put negative grades. <laughs> so, um, what are our goals and where do we progress? I, I pull the same error again and again. Plus one. Do not repeat this error after me. By applying ratio operator to um, a given eigenstate of harmonic oscillator, you get larger one from what one. Okay. The date we have up there, uh -huh. we have that day off. Okay, excellent, day. excellent. <laughs> bring, bring it on Wednesday then. Okay. Um, it is against my uh, principles. I want to uh, everyone to have at least a week for completion of homework, but if we leave more time, then uh, homeworks will be very behind of class material. And you will not get benefit, any any benefit from your education. Okay. And uh, you oh. you'll get some credits anyway, as you probably have figured out. So um, we will cover most of this thing on Monday, and this problem was covered last time, right? So uh, if you know that annihilation is a conju permission conjugate of creation, we just take the matrix that we developed. No, I'm not sure, showing it here. I mean, yeah. Oh, okay, it is here. You just take this matrix, flip, flip it over, and then your first question will be done. And then you just verbally describe what you see there. So for 
three uh, remaining things. We will use discrete representation, not as methods, but more as uh, algebraic form of these operators, and try to construct all needed operators, all standard operators that we need in quantum theory based on creation and annihilation. Like, you know that creation is a linear combination of position and momentum. Same annihilation. But if you write them on the top of each other, you can solve and uh, for inverse problem, you can express position as a linear combination of creation and annihilation, and same for momentum. And then, based on, on this writing, you can escalate and do all operators. Why should we torture uh, ourselves? It makes all operations much more symmetric and clear. It, it is this algebraic form specifically for harmonic oscillator is much simpler and quicker than uh, differential operators. So it, it is designed not to make life harder, but to make life easier. Well, the easiest is to do nothing. I, I realize it. So, um, where, should we, where should we go? If our cre... No. If I write it, if you'll be boring, I should declare what are the rules. Predict future. Make an analogy of if it is um, diatomic motion, oscillator means something has to oscillate. You can see quantum features of quantum oscillators in Raman spectra if you do them in your uh, research companion of, of your studies. But First thing that oscillator does, even quantum oscillator, it oscillates. So we need to see a quantum analog of classical oscillations. And simplest classical oscillations is when we remove something from equilibrium and release, and it starts going forth and back. Right? It is what Austin did show uh, one Friday before. So we will try to do this uh, modeling in a couple of ways. And first way will be standard, traditional eigenstate expansion with help of, uh, of this fancy operator that, that we did. So it is the goal. And everything we do is a preparation step. If I declare just answer or just call Austin to repeat his um, presentation, we can get some scientific insights, but we cannot project our minds towards different regimes of uh, oscillations and initial conditions. If we do some analytical de derivations, if they are possible, it means we immediately have all answers, not just one sample initial condition, but we have answers for any conditions, and we can predict how it will behave. So there are some benefits which uh, should justify effort and hard work, hopefully. So, what is it? Square root n plus one. So it picks number n and releases number n plus one, right? So what it picks, what it gives. And this uh, selfish, corrupted postman takes a hit. If you do annihilation, we do not write minus. It picks a different number m and releases m minus one, which will work any time except uh, the ground state when it will make zero. Now. What if we try to repeat the same exercise that I hope you successfully completed in the homework? I will be very curious to, to look at it myself. So if you multiply creation times annihilation, we add a constant 
we saw that there should be a constant good H bar omega, call it Hamiltonian, and just look what, what will happen. So we are looking for uh, Newtonian in discrete form, in the basis of eigenstates. Do you know the answer? from your scientific intuition. No punishment, no requirements, but I will be not surprised if some of you you, you have an answer immediately. Do not, do not uh, think of exact equations or numbers, just functional form. How that matrix of Hamiltonian in basis of eigenstates should look like. Any, uh, yes. I don't know, is it going to be in that same kind of like row form where it's... So, um, it is it is a follow-up from uh, the idea. If you do have eigenstates, those are eigenstates of Hamiltonian. Which means, if you act by Hamiltonian on one of the states from this set, you get this state back. Right? And this can be achieved only by di uh, diagonal methods. Where diagonal elements will be uh, energy values. So right now we will do this exercise. We already know that matrices for creation and annihilation are off diagonal. They have sub sub diagonal thing. But if you multiply them together, it is expected that we will get a diagonal matrix. So it is what we are going to, to get. And we didn't put much of our attention yet to eigenvalues. But you may know it from your previous life and scientific intuition that energies of a harmonic oscillator are equidistantly spaced. If you go to next and next and next, it just get more and more h bar omega. And if one starts with one half of h bar omega, this will be like one half, three halves, five halves of h bar omega, and the rest will be zeros. So it will be a little effort to get this matrix from, let me say, first principles. And again, why are we doing it? Because later we are going to see how displaced oscillator oscillates, whether it will do the same things as classical oscillator does, or if you deviate from it. And if deviate, then how? For example, if you remember <coughs> what Austin declared last time, he told that uncertainty of position for oscillator will increase, and uncertainty of momentum will not. We are going to check uh, this uh, hypothesis. So all of these efforts are going this, this uh, way. So just plugging in fluidation and annihilation, right? What do we see for the remaining generous nine minutes? So this one x m generates m minus one constants. Summations can be pulled all up front. And then, what is the structure of this equation? So we have bra, cap, bra, cap. Why many People love quantum mechanics. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, why many people who want to do this theory select quantum mechanics as, as something much more preferred compared to other theories? 
well, you, you, you'll continue laughing, but it is one of the simplest theories in the world. London will appreciate it due to extended background in math. So anything we do in quantum mechanics is linear. So you never see square of the wave function entering the equation. It enters to some observables, but if you solve equations, either time-dependent, time-independent, it is not there. If you have products of operators, no matter how many of operators you multiply, you will get only one linear operator after. Because, see, we have a combination. It is an operator, another operator. Bra, cat, bra, cat. But as soon as in the product, bra meets cat, they convert into delta function, or disappear completely, and we will have only last bra and first cat. And the rest will pop up in constants. So even with longer chain of stuff like this, at the end, each operator can be written in the form of some uh, operator and then with this uh, cat and brother. <coughs> this is the reason why quantum theory is so simple. <laughs> well, much simpler than uh, many other areas of human knowledge. So how do we practice this simplicity here? So when cat meets bra, they form Kronecker what? Delta. Yes. <laughs> so this when this two one meets, they will be non-zero only if m equals m minus one, right? So you, you recognize it is the, the same writing. I was not careful enough to pull all summations up front, but it doesn't matter. So now we do have this snakes and this mice that they will consume. So we may want to carefully process this removal of, of delta function. So everywhere where we have m minus one, we should write m. After removing uh, one snake and one mice. Everywhere where we had m, we should write n plus how many? One. Yes. That's it? Let's, let's try. So instead of n, we will write n plus one. Instead of n plus one, I will write n plus one. Instead of m, I will write square root of n plus one. Right? Instead of n plus one, I will keep writing n plus one because I like calligraphy. <laughs> well, it's very poor calligraphy. Summation over n. Or we can make a summation over n plus one. Big bar omega brackets plus one half. Are we happy? Okay, am I happy? No, because it is too long to, to write, even if we love calligraphy. First, we can remove square root and put just n plus one without square root. And second, why should I write n plus one? Let me replace it to letter k. And nothing should be affected. So h bar omega summation k k 
key times k k if someone listens and doesn't watch it it just sounds <laughs> strange k k k k we are done do you see a diagonal matrix so it means um, at row number k and column number k there will be element k and the rest are zeros Well, not k, but k plus one half, because we put it. And we start uh, from zero, so one half. k equals one plus one half. k equals two plus one half. k equals three plus one half. And it is two big zeros for the rest. Zero, one, two, Three. So rows and columns, zero, one, two, three, and so forth. H bar one again. This stuff is just vectors. So we do have matrix form of Hamiltonian operator. And does it match our expectation about diagonal form? Matches X patients diagonal form. We do not have time for the next step to do it mathematically, but I'm going to announce so that uh, next time we will have uh, a little seeds in our brains. Tricks, tricks, and bypasses. So in order to consider oscillating oscillator, we will solve a completely different problem that will give an immediate answer to this. And the problem will be um, okay, I type it somewhere here. So we will consider that the displaced state of the oscillator. It should be Gaussian, but it will be not an eigenstate. There, there is no eigenstate of harmonic oscillator that is displaced Gaussian, displaced from equilibrium. So it will be a linear combination of all eigenstates. Linear combination with some unknown coefficients. Since it is not an eigenstate, these coefficients will change in time. And this change in time will accumulate as oscillations if they are there. And by things that I want to skip, right now and declare later, if we find an eigenstate of annihilation operator in such form, we will find the answer for this oscillating oscillator. So next time when we meet, we will find eigenvalues of annihilation operator. Thank you for investing your time. Looking forward to seeing you on Monday. Have a nice weekend. Yes. Uh, back on the other side, we had like H equals H bar omega than your back. Mm -hmm. um, is that H or just yeah, about the eigen energies? Oh, yeah. oh, one. Like, is that the operator H? Or it is operator H in the basis oh, yeah. of eigenspace. Oh, yeah. It's like saying it's a muscle. You're talking about capital. Yeah. Which is kind of Oh, in the matrix form. I mean, yeah, it's an operator. Oh, yes, it's a lot of like. on vector of. He's a he's a pretty nice guy. I think he's going to go that. Or one of the eigen six. That's like your second. Not really. It's what this one? Fifteen. Yeah. I guess. So we may erase. It's still. This? Yeah, it's not like a vector. Yeah. No, yeah, I understand that. But I mean, does it operate on ideal states? Right now, it is an operator that I completely understand your question and I'm happy to answer. Okay. It may take a second to formulate. Okay. The operator is expressed 
in basis of eigenstates. It can act not only on eigenstate, but on arbitrary wave function. But this arbitrary wave function must be expressed also in the basis of eigenstates as expansion over eigenstates. So psi arbitrary wave function. I guess it wouldn't have to be, but you could express it in terms of summation so of C. So it just makes your life easier. Yeah, no, I agree. Okay. So I guess I'm confused. If I operate on a state with that uh, matrix, uh, it's, is it an operator? Changes the state at all? Yes. Yes. Mm. Or not, not, yeah. Maybe not changes, that's a bad word. <laughs> um, so but. if your state where you, if, uh, if you apply this Hamiltonian to arbitrary state, then you can discuss it a little later. But if you apply it to eigenstate, when this uh, C coefficients will be 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, so only one of, of these coefficients will be non-zero. Yeah. Then, uh, by applying Hamiltonian to such state, you will get the state itself multiplied by a bar omega, and yeah. then uh, yeah. So whatever k plus one half times times psi. Okay, so I shouldn't be thinking about the states as Gaussian. Function? No, no. You need to think of states as uh, expansion in uh, <laughs> expansion in the <coughs> basis of eigenstates. states. Okay, that was my issue. Vectors, vectors. Sorry. So the I, I need to, to do a better job and declare it. So we are trying to escape Cartesian space mm -hmm. and do everything in vectors in discrete space. Mm -hmm. Make sense? Yes. We are not avoiding Cartesian space in the labs, and that, therefore they are so simple and intuitive. <laughs> but uh, in, if you want to do theoretical description of anything, 99.9999% you go into discrete basis and uh, mm -hmm. work with vectors rather than yeah, yeah. functions. Yeah, that makes sense. I just didn't make that jump. So. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> no, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So, as a non-chemistry major, huh? is there a particular class that you think that I have to take that would basically, I guess, what's the benefit? Yeah, or, that open unleash your imagination. Yeah, well, because I'm the route that I'm going, it seems like I'm probably going to be working with materials. Um, well, I can be selfish and invite you my course next semester. If if you think that it would help me, like, in the synthesis of materials, that would probably be it a good It will thing. help you in computational characterization of materials and computer-guided design of materials. So, like, if I wanted to, say, like, make a material with, like, such and such properties, that would be a good way to basically figure out how to do that? Mm -hmm. Okay. So I might do that, then. It would be, like, theoretical synthesis that you could apply to actual synthesis. Right. Well, because then if I'm going to be doing industrial engineering, too, then I...